Hey guys, Maju up here, and welcome to episode 2 in our 2D uh, game engine series. And today we're going to be adding on the window to our game engine. So we're going to make a new class, and I'm going to call it window. So this is, will be our game window. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a public window. And now I want to give it uh, some, very, some uh, data, right? But I actually want to give it quite a bit of data. Like I want to give it, give it like uh, the width, height, uh, a scale, which you'll see what the scale is for in a second. Uh, I also later on will have the uh, input, and it's uh, it takes it in a bit. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to straight up give it the game container, just so that I can just use getters from the game container to get the information I need. So we're going to have that. Now I actually need to put the information into my game container here, which is what I'm going to do now. So actually we're going to have a private uh, int, a width, and a height. And actually I'm going to just straight up set these right now to 320 and 240. Sounds like good width and height to me. That's how many pixels, by the way. And then we have a private float scale. I'm going to set that equal to 1, like that. And we need title, string, title equals, let's call it, right? Maz engine uh, version 1.0, even though it's not done yet. We'll just call it version 1.0. And I think that's all we need for right now. So I'm going to save that. And I'm actually going to generate some getters and setters. So in Eclipse, you can right click, go to source. And then you can say generate getters and setters. And I want to generate height, scale, not thread. I want title and width. And last member, put them at the bottom of the page. And we'll generate. And boom, now we have some getters and setters. All the way down here. Which makes that nice and easy. Let's go back to our window. Now we're going to need some objects, right? So our game is going, our window itself is going to be a J frame. And we'll call it frame. Now our game that's going it's going to render an image right we need a buffered image and we'll call it image because i'm very creative that's going to be where the actual like pixel data for our vid or, like, screen is going to be stored you'll see so when we render like a square we render it to our image now we want a private uh graphics actually we want a canvas which is where our image is going to be rendered to. Then we need a private graphics G, which is going to be a, I call it G. I should, I'm just gonna leave it as G. Hopefully that doesn't annoy some of you. I know some people get really annoyed when you name stuff like that, but it's just common for me to do that. I'm gonna make a private um, buffer strategy and I'm gonna call it BS, because it's the buffer strategy. And so the graphics is actually going to be for a buffer strategy. And that's it. I think that's all the data objects we need. Now, all these have to be imported. So to import it, you hit control. While holding control, hit shift. And while holding control and shift, hit zero. And it auto imports. That's very, very handy. And you don't have to go onto Google and look up the import for all these. So that's, that's Eclipse being awesome. So. Let's start up our engine. So what we're going to do is I'm going to say our image is equal to our new buffered image. And a buffered image, if you don't know, buffer just means stored in RAM. So it's an image that we're storing in the RAM. So a buffered image, and I want to set the height, which is going to be gc.getWidth. gc.getWidth, and you can just press enter, auto completes. gc.getHeight. And now we actually need to give it, like, what kind of image is it? And that's going to be a cap. Uh, we're going to type in the name of the class, buffered image. And we're going to get type. Oh, I misspelled. It's a type underscore int RGB. That is the type of image we want. We want to store an RGB image. And as an integer. All right. Now we got our image. Uh, let's get our canvas going. So our canvas will equal a new canvas. And now I need to set the size of the canvas, but in order to do that, to set the, like, if you see if I say canvas that set preferred size, it takes a 
dimension class. So we're going to make the dimension first. So dim dimension s equals new dimension. And I'm going to give it size gc that get width times gc that get scale. And gc I get height times gc that get scale. So what the scale is for, if we actually made our image, our, our frame, the size of our width and height, it would be so tiny. 320 pixels by 240 pixels. That's really tiny. So we're going to actually scale it up, right? Now dimensions, for some reason, only takes an integer, which is fine. So we got to cast these to an int. So I'm going to stick an integer here. And I'm going to surround the beginning here in an int. And cast this to an integer. Getting a little off screen here. I'm going to go all the way over. And there we go. And then we also need to import it with our control shift O. And there we go. Now we got our dimensions. Now I'm going to say a canvas that set preferred size is S. Canvas that set maximum size is S. And canvas that set minimum size S. So we're going to set the canvas size to our dimension size and it won't change. We're going to keep it that size. All right. Now we got our canvas set up. We need our frame to put our canvas into. So what we're going to do here is going to say frame equals new J frame. And inside the parentheses of our J frame, we can give it the J frame name. So I'm going to say get title. So that will give us our title of our frame. And now the very first thing you do whenever you make a J frame is you set default close operation. And we're going to set it to jframe.exit on close. So when you click the X button on the J frame, the program will end. That that's simple. All right. Otherwise, if you close your frame, the program will not end. So I'm going to say well, we got it that. Now I'm going to change the layout. So I'm going to set the layout. Oh, that set layout to a new border layout. And this is just handy for our canvas because we want our canvas to be matched up to the border. So I'm going to, so we got our layout. Now I'm going to add, not a window listener, I just want to add. We're going to add our canvas onto our frame, but we can actually add in another little modifier here if we put a little comma. And I want to say border layout, capital B, dot center. I want to add it to the center of the frame. Right? Now I want to make sure that the frame and canvas are the same size. Because we haven't actually set the size of the frame. So if I say frame dot pack, it'll set this frame to the size of the canvas. And it'll make it nice and neat. Boom. Now, what we got to do is we got to say frame that set uh, location relative to I'm going to set that equal to null so that way when we create our frame our window it'll start in the middle of our screen otherwise it'll start in the top left corner and that just looks bad and then we're going to do frame that set resizable false I don't want people to touch my frame otherwise it'll look weird and last but not least we're going to set it to visible we're going to set visible true otherwise you're not going to be able to see your frame get rid of this console Alrighty, now let's set up our buffer strategy and graphics because that's how we're going to render. So for our canvas, I'm going to take our canvas and I'm going to tell it to create a buffer strategy. And the number of buffers is going to be two. We're going to have two buffers to render to. Right now, I'm going to say BS is equal to canvas that get buffer strategy. All right. And G is equal to bs.getDrawGraphics. And there we go. We have the basics of our window set up. So now we need to be able to update our window. So if I go in here and I make a public void update. Let's add some spaces here. So uh, it's more in the middle of the screen. So we got our update. right? And I'm going to just say g.drawImage. And I'm going to say a canvas that and we're, we're going to draw it at zero. Ah, crap. Zero, 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 to that's our start to canvas that get width to canvas that get height. That's going to be our width and height of our image. We don't need any of this except for the observer 
and that's going to be null. We don't need to observe this. Up. Oh, also, we need to tell it our image, which is going to be image. <laughs> there we go. We're drawing our image to our canvas, and now this is actually drawing it to our buffer strategy, which is attached to our canvas. So in order for the buffer strategy to draw it to the canvas, we have to say bs dot show. We have to show our bs. And there we go, we have a window that should work perfectly fine. So let's go back to our game container and up here with my thread, I'm gonna go underneath it and make a private window window. Boom. Now to initialize it, I'm gonna do it in the start before we start the main thread. We say window equals new window. And then I'm gonna give it this. There we go. And down here when we render it, I'm going to say window dot update. So we're gonna update the window when we render. And there we go, we now have a window. So if we run this, we should get a window, which our scale is set to one, so it's actually pretty small. And when we close it, it does in the program. Let's set our scale to like four. And we render it and we run it. There we go, now we got a nice big window. And it's going to be 320 pixels by 240 pixels. Which you'll see in the next episode when we add in the renderer. And we actually start rendering stuff to our window. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. Comment, rate, subscribe, and thanks for watching.